Hi, I'm Chris Page, also known as DC Breaks, and I'm here at the EBS Institute to do a really deep dive into ReSpace and modern drum and bass bass sound design. We have our sound here, uh, essentially pretty much exactly the same. And what I'm going to do now is just start to add in some different distortion and filtering to kind of see and how we can kind of take this sound forward. So um, let's just turn off um, everything apart from our low pass <coughs> filter to start with. Oh, I've, I've added a reverb at the end here because um, it's quite a good tip when you're making sounds like this. It can get really fatiguing if you're like listening to and things get really loud and distorted quickly. So just adding a little bit of reverb at the end can just soften the sound and make it a bit easier uh, on your ears. So let's listen to this. So the same. So we're going to add in our faturator. And so this is where phase plant starts coming into its own because we can take any of these controls, for example, the mix, so the amount of distortion we're adding, and assign it to a macro. And then we can just easily control that with this one knob. If I had a MIDI controller with a knob on it, I could assign it to that, and it would be a nice way of just kind of uh, adding in some distortion as I'm kind of going along. OK, and then I've also got a, um, a ladder filter. So this is just, again, another effectively low-pass filter. Um, a bit like how we saw with the terrorist bass running in the sampler. So the signal flow is important here because, um, you know, obviously if I'd had the distortion at the start of the chain and if I'd had the, maybe this low pass filter before the distortion, it's not going to work in the same way. So that's kind of a consideration. Uh, another thing that people start doing was kind of EQing the sound when they're mixing the stuff. Um, and Reese's became like really like tearing as opposed to being like warm and kind of resonant that we heard. It started to become louder and brasher and um, guys like Bad Company and stuff were making much more like a harder sound. And so we can kind of brighten things by adding a bit of uh, sort of um, high sort of shelf EQ on things. And then people started create, uh, getting experimental with other types of filters as well. So. Uh, what I've done here is I've set up two band pass filters, so we're going to be removing a portion of the sound. And one of the things that people started doing was to add two bar band pass filters and modulating the frequency that's, that's being removed differently on both, so you're kind of sweeping through and cutting out different frequencies using two different filters. And the way that we can do that in Faceplant is to create an LFO. The LFO, if I click on, uh, if I move the mouse over here, you can see it's controlling this macro up here. And this macro up here is controlling the cutoff of this bandpass filter and this bandpass filter, but you'll see they're kind of moving in different amounts. And also, they're actually slightly different models. So there's different modes within Faceplant for a lot of these things. So there's different kind of styles of filter. This one, you can see, adds a lot of kind of harmonic richness above the cutoff point, And that gives it another kind of distinctive sound. So I can control all of that by this macro here. So this is band pass depth that I've called it. And so this is just controlling the range, if you like, of this LFO. So if this is like 0, 1, minus 1, when it's up here, it's, it's um, going to be fully open. And when it's hit down here, it's going to be fully closed. Um, so we, we can kind of, um, sorry, it'll be fully closed at 0. Um, and then it'll be kind of all the way the other way at minus 1. So we can kind of control how much of this LFO is affecting our band pass filter, and we can do that with this macro here. So if I have it all the way down, we won't hear anything. Let's give that a bit more. Uh, no, sorry, we are hearing a little bit. Um, I haven't set that up correctly. But anyway, the point is you can kind of add mix. That should be like, there we go. OK, I've done that slightly wrong, but you get the idea. <laughs> um, and then also, we can control the rate um, of the LFO to make it faster or slower, uh, again, just using a macro. And having it a bit slower tends to make it sound a bit more kind of almost like a flanging or phasing type of effect. So this was something that people started experimenting with to kind of take this sound and kind of evolve it and make it sound like more futuristic, more techie, more like something somebody hadn't really heard before. Um, it's, it's easy to look now and kind of think, oh, yeah, filters, you know, everyone uses filters all the time. There's all these kind of weird and wonderful filter models. But when everything was a lot more hardware based, you really, you know, you maybe only had like a choice of three or four filters. And so when 
people started developing new types of filters, it became like, oh, well, that's like a really, like just having a high pass filter at, at times was like, that's like a new effect I've not heard before. Like drum bass tracks like um, Pulse and things like that, where the sound kind of filtered in, that was like, oh my God, that's mind blowing. <laughs> you know, people take, kind of take it for granted now. Um, and so, yeah, so in the same way though, we can explore some of these really unusual filter types and kind of get experimental and make sounds that people haven't heard before. And that can be kind of an interesting area to uh, explore. What then kind of happened as well was that people would sample and resample some of these sounds. I'm just gonna grab some water. Um, people didn't necessarily know um, how other people were synthesizing these sounds. So they'd do what all good producers do and just nick it and sample it. And then you kind of get into like creating new sounds that way as we've seen already. So here's one I ran off earlier. And taking it into a sampler, um, I think I've just put in a bit of pitch bend on this. So yeah, so you can start to play around with a pitch bend or play different notes. And um, in the logic sampler, which is something else that people started to, ex uh, to experiment with, you have things like uh, unison. So unison is essentially just triggering the same sound multiple times and detuning them slightly. And that again, creates some interesting, uh, almost comb filtering like um, destructive uh, interference on the sound. And in the logic sampler, you can randomly detune um, by however much you want. But if you just do it very small amounts, you get a particularly distinctive sound. But because it's random, every time you kind of run the sound, it's gonna be slightly different. So let's just listen to that. Might be different next time. Yeah. It could be the same each time. So slightly different that time. So a way to do that is to kind of take that sample, uh, program it, and then perhaps just loop it, run off some, and then kind of start editing uh, some of the different variations, if you like. Um, so yeah, so kind of adjusting um, kind of things like unison and pitch bend, you start to get a bit more movement into the sound. It's all about kind of evolving the sound and kind of taking it forward. Um, so that was kind of one uh, way of making these sounds. And it's obviously quite a different sounding sound to the one we started with. It's a lot brighter. Um, it's a lot more movement and uh, kind of, yeah, just, just different really. So this, this, this kind of idea of a Reese evolved from being this deep low resonant bass into this more kind of tearing, techier kind of sound. Uh, and so with that, we can then kind of explore kind of the same principles um, of having a number of layers of different uh, oscillators being filtered, distorted, and then kind of modulating or changing some of the parameters on filters and distortion to create entirely new sounds. I hope you enjoyed that session. If you want to see more videos like this, just head over to the DBS Institute YouTube channel now.